Hi there, I'm Kate and welcome to the Sally Tomato YouTube channel. One smart watch face, three different band styles, and hundreds of fabrics to choose from, and we are going to have the biggest watch party ever. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to incorporate watch band adapters in a classic buckle band, a classic snap band variation, and a cuff style band. This pattern was designed to be compatible with the Apple Watch and Sally Tomatoes Smart Watch, which is available on our website. Now there may be slight variations between different watch manufacturers and the adapters, but be sure to take notes on your pattern and you can easily make those adjustments. Be sure to purchase the pattern before beginning your project. The pattern and your supplies can be purchased from our website or request them at your local quilt shop. Each band style has its own illustrated section in the pattern, so our video tutorial is going to follow that same order. And be sure to pause the video if you need a little extra time so we can sew together, or if you prefer, advance to the section that is most interesting to you. So let's gather some great fabric and I'll see you at the work table. Before beginning, review the recommended fabrics and helpful notions on the back of the pattern cover and also the pattern corrections page on our website for any updates. For each watch band style, you'll want to measure your wrist and compare the measurements listed under the section of adjust pattern pieces in your pattern. First, you'll measure your wrist and compare the sizes that are listed for each of the band styles. And then if you need a larger buckle or snap band, add the difference in the measurement of your wrist to the heights of the piece A and piece P that are listed in the pattern. If you need a larger cuff, add the difference in measurements to the heights of piece A and piece C. You may also find it helpful to label your pieces as you cut them by marking the name of each piece on the wrong side with a removable pen or chalk. You'll also find the templates are on page 5 of your pattern. And then one last note before we dig in. If you prefer, all the holes for buckle and snap eyelets may be marked and punched after the band or cuff assembly. This allows you an opportunity for a more customized fit. All right, for the buckle band, you'll need one main fabric and your buckle hardware. Follow your pattern for cutting the eyelet band, the buckle band, and the band strap. So our next step is to shape the eyelet band. First, you're going to mark a vertical center line on the wrong side of the main piece A eyelet band and align the notch A template to the center marked line. You're going to trace the angled corners of the template and then simply flip the template along that center marked line and trace the angled corners again. You're creating a notch. Position the NB template aligned to the end of piece A and trace and then you'll repeat at the opposite end. Cut the shaped ends and notches following the marked lines and then we can move on to assembling the eyelet band. On the wrong side of one piece A end, mark a center line in from one long edge. Then you're going to measure and mark in from the shaped end just along on that center line and then add four more marks evenly spaced. And then you're going to punch a small hole at each cross mark and you can certainly wait to mark and punch the eyelet holes until the band is completed if you like. That's certainly an option. Then you're going to thread one band end through a watch band adapter, bringing wrong sides together and then matching the shaped ends. You may actually find it easier for heavier fabrics to remove the adapter pin and then position the piece A band at the notch on the adapter bracket and then reinsert the pin and that way it's a little bit easier and again then you'll use basting tape or glue to hold those layers of the band together. At your sewing machine, top stitch close to the hardware and the remaining edges with a narrow allowance. 
You may find a zipper foot helpful. It's usually a little smaller than a regular presser foot and allows for a little better maneuvering. I'm using a very narrow foot, which also works well, but it's a little longer and occasionally I'll back stitch where I would normally stitch forward for maneuvering around the hardware, as you can see. Refer to your pattern for the recommended seam allowances and stitch lengths. At the existing holes, punch through the remaining layer. Now we're going to go ahead and mark and shape the buckle band. On the wrong side of the main piece B buckle band, mark a horizontal line in from both long edges at one end of the band. And then you're going to mark vertical lines from the same short end, creating a rectangular box. And if you're using a different width buckle, you'll want to adjust the measurements so the box opening is still measuring what's listed in your pattern. Okay, so now mark a vertical line in from the opposite short end uh, on the wrong side and then you'll place the notch A template on the wrong side of the opposite short end and trace the notches. Next, we're going to cut out just the box and the notches following your marks. Be sure to not cut on the vertical line between the notches. We need that to stay whole. And before we get too far, we now need to make the band strap. On the wrong side of the band strap, draw a line just in from one long edge, and then you're going to fold the opposite long side, wrong sides together, aligning that raw edge on the marked line and I'm using a little extra basting tape to help hold those two layers together. Now at the machine we're going to top stitch along both long edges of the band strap and while I'm here I'm going to trim away the excess fabric that's even with the top layer so now the strap is a little narrower and we're ready to move on to assembling the buckle band. All right, so now on the right side of the buckle band, at the end with the cutout, I'm going to go a little out of order here. I'm going to stitch both long edges with a narrow allowance, and I'm ending just beyond the cutout box. And then I'm going back, and I'm going to top stitch around the box Thread the buckle band with the cutout over the cro buckle crossbar, folding wrong sides together and aligning those little cut ends of the box. Add a small piece of basting tape to hold the layers together closer to the buckle bar. And then on the wrong side of piece B, the buckle band, position about three quarters inch end of the band strap right next to that right side end of the buckle band. And if you'd like your band strap to be a little bit closer, I'm going to actually tuck my strap just slightly under that end of the buckle band. So my strap will be a little closer to the buckle itself. Now we're going to just top stitch the strap to the band between the band edges. So just a little back stitch and forward stitch just to hold that in place. Bring the strap around to the right side of the band and then we're going to bring it back to the wrong side so it's wrapping around the band and then tape the end of the strap to itself overlapping just a bit maybe about a half inch. And then we're going to thread the piece B through the band adapter, or as you can see, my fabric is a little thicker, so I'll remove the pin in the watch band adapter and position it over the notch and then replace the pin. And then we can bring the wrong sides together, overlapping that piece B end.
Now our last step is to top stitch the band close to the hardware and along the raw edges and be sure to take your time. You will need to stop and start under PC which is your strap. It's difficult to stitch all the way under so it's just much easier to stop and start and then carefully stitch. It's a lot going on in one small space so take your time. Congratulations! You've just completed your first watch band. I'll show you how easy it is to insert the adapters into the watch near the end of the tutorial. But now let's gather our fabrics for the snap band and give that a try. Again, review the section adjust pattern pieces for customizing the fit of your watch band. Also follow the manufacturer's instructions for fusing the interfacing and installing the snap hardware. Refer to your pattern for recommended seam allowances and stitch lengths. And all right, we are ready. Let's get started for that snap band. You'll need a main fabric, fusible interfacing. I'm using hair canvas because it easily fuses at a lower temperature, so it's really nice for the cork fabric that I'm using. And then you'll also need the line 20 snaps for the closure. First, you'll cut your pieces. You'll need a piece A and B cut from your main fabric for the long and short bands. And then also cut interfacing pieces for each, which is going to help support the snaps. Next, you'll shape the bands by marking a vertical center line on the wrong side of the main piece A, that's the long band, and align the notch A template to that center marked line. You're going to trace the angled corners of the template, then flip the template along the center marked line and trace the angled corners again, completing a notch. Position the end B template aligned to the end of the long band, that's piece A, and you'll trace and repeat at the opposite end. Repeat the steps to shape the main piece B, that's the short band, and then after tracing, you can cut the shaped ends and the notches following the marked lines. And I'm only going to trim or cut one curved end on each piece of the long band and the short band. It, I'll show you a little trick as we go along and I think you'll like how smooth the curved ends finish at the end when we're top stitching. So I'm just going to trim one for now. Now shape one end of the interfacing piece A for the long band aligning the side and ends of the end B template along one end of piece A. And you'll position the interfacing piece A centered between the long edges and about a quarter inch from the wrong side shaped end of that piece A. The longer band. Fuse the interfacing in place following the manufacturer's instructions. And you're going to repeat the steps to attach the interfacing piece B to the short band. On the wrong side of the long band at the end, mark a center line in from the long edge and then you're going to measure and mark in from the what would be the shaped end on the center line. I haven't cut that shaped end yet so it's just going to be in from that straight short edge but marking on the center line and then you'll add two more marks and these will be for snap placements and don't be afraid to change the spacing or eliminate one snap placement if you'd like and certainly if you don't need to add the extra snap that works just great. Okay so now punch a small hole at each cross mark and then you're going to thread the band end through the watch band adapter bringing wrong sides together and then matching the ends. All 
I'm going to match one shaped end to my straight short end and then use a little basting tape or glue to hold the layers together. Okay, now at the sewing machine, top stitch close to the hardware and then along the remaining edges with a narrow allowance. You can see I need to do just a little bit of a back stitch so I can get my presser foot a little further away from the hardware, making it a little easier to stitch. And then you can see I have my untrimmed um, part or end of the band underneath as the bottom layer and I'll trim that as, just as soon as I finish top stitching. So this is a way to get a perfectly even curved corner. At the existing holes, now you can punch through the remaining layer and then install the cap halves of the snaps in the punched holes. I recommend reviewing Jess's blog post of how to install line 20 snaps tutorial dated November 12, 2020 for additional tips in installing the hardware. All right. Let's move on to assemble the short band. On the wrong side of one main piece B, that's the short band end, mark a center line in from one long edge, and then measure and mark just a single mark in from the shaped end, or in my case, I'm going to mark from the straight short end because I haven't shaped it yet, along the center line and you're going to punch a small hole at that one cross mark. And then again, thread the band through the second watch band adapter, bringing wrong sides together and matching the ends. And again, use basting tape or glue to hold those layers together. All right, back to the machine to top stitch, we're going to stitch close to the hardware. So again, I'll need to do a little back stitch here so I can have a little more access with my foot and stitch more easily, but stitch around the remaining edges with a narrow allowance. And then back at the work table, I will do a little trimming and I can trim right along my curved end it'll be a perfect guide for trimming that last layer. And then also at the existing hole, punch through the remaining layer of the band and then install the eyelet half of the snap in that punched hole. Congratulations, you've just finished your snap watch band. I'll show you how easy it is to insert the adapter into the watch face at the end of the tutorial. So for now, let's gather a few more supplies and let's create the cuff style watch band. Again, for this last band, review the section of adjusting the pattern pieces for customizing the fit of your cuff watch band. Also follow the manufacturer's instructions for fusing, interfacing, and installing the snap hardware. Refer to your pattern for the recommended seam allowances and stitch lengths. And we are ready. Let's get started. You'll need a main fabric and fusible interfacing. Again, I'm using a hair canvas because it's going to fuse very easily at a low temperature, perfect for the cork fabric that I'm using and you'll also need the line 20 snaps for the closure. First, cut your pieces. You'll need a piece A and piece B cut from your main fabric for the cuff and connector tabs. Also cut the needed interfacing, which is going to add support for those snaps. Next, you're going to shape the cuff and connector tabs by aligning the notch A template to the outer corner of the wrong side of the main piece A cuff. Trace the angled corner of the template and repeat for the remaining corners on both pieces A. Or you could choose to do rounded corners. Simply position a small spool of thread or the template B, which has the curves, at the corners of both pieces A. Also mark two corners at one short end 
of each piece be connector tab. Only one end needs to be shaped of each of the connector tabs. And then trim the corners following the marked lines. You're going to repeat the same steps to shape the corners of the interfacing piece C. So use the same shaping template or spool that you used for shaping your main fabric pieces. And then you can position the interfacing centered on the wrong side of one of your main piece A cuff pieces and then fuse in place. The next step is completely optional, but it really personalizes the cuff, making it a designer piece. Take some time to add machine embroidery, decorative stitches, or even painted embellishments along the length of the interfaced cuff piece. So this is what I've done on a faux leather, just some simple satin stitching. So I'm going to continue showing you how to put the cuff band together on our printed cork fabric. So on the right side, mark the center of one main piece cuff, or that would be your embellished piece, using a removable pen or chalk, and then mark a short line to the left and right of the center. All right, now you'll need your watch face. You're going to measure the raised area on the back of the watch. If desired, draw and cut out the shape on a piece of heavy paper to create a template. And I'm going to use the cutout template that's included with the pattern. It's specifically sized for the Sally Tomato smartwatch. And then you're going to center the template over the piece A or your band fabric center mark and between the marks. Trace the shape and cut it out, this time following the outside edge of the marked line. So you're actually going to remove the marking of your circle. In this case, I mean, have a circle, but you'll remove that. That makes the opening just slightly larger, which is going to work fine. Okay, we're ready to attach the connector tabs. Thread one connector tab over a watch band adapter and fold one unshaped end under, wrong sides together, and hold that unshaped end in place with double-sided basting tape or basting glue. And you'll repeat for the remaining connector tab and adapter. Now position the edge of one adapter, that would be the hardware part of the adapter, centered along one guideline near the opening of your cuff, right side up, and hold that connector tab in place with a piece of basting tape, and you'll repeat that for the second adapter with its tab centered along the opposite guideline, along the circle opening. Okay, now we can stitch near the hardware and along the raw edges of the connector tabs that will hold them in place. And you can see I'm stitching a little further away from the hardware than I had on the other two watch bands. This will help stitching a slightly further away for our assembly step. So let's begin to assemble the cuff. All right, on the wrong side of one main cuff end, mark a line from one short end and then a cross mark in from both long edges. So you're really going to create two little marks. Punch a hole at each cross mark and I use the smallest hole possible so that my snap fits nice and snug. Then place both main cuff pieces wrong sides together aligning the raw edges and again use basting tape or sewing clips to hold those layers together and then we'll head back to the sewing machine. All right, now we can top stitch along all the raw edges, including the smartwatch opening with a narrow allowance. And I'm going to stitch this opening very carefully. It's kind of tight and I'm going to gently fold away each band adapter so that I can carefully stitch around. Now you may find that using a zipper foot or a narrow foot will help and certainly try maybe a darning or a quilting foot. If you can see where you're stitching and 
stitch close to the raw edge of the opening that's cut out but still stay far enough away from the adapter you're going to be just fine so just take your time and you may want to experiment with a different foot all right now that the top stitching is done we can carefully cut out the opening in the second fabric layer following the cut edge of in, that's in the first layer and then at the existing punched holes you're going to punch through the remaining layer and install the cap halves of the snaps in the punched holes and for additional tips be sure to refer to a, our blog post of how to install line 20 snap tutorial dated November 12th of 2020 and for a perfect fit wrap the cuff around your wrist to a comfortable position and then you can measure and use a marking pen or pencil make sure it's removable to mark the position of the snap caps on the remaining end of the cuff check that the placement marks are even and equally spaced from the short end and then punch a small hole at each cross mark through the cuff install the eyelet half of the snap in each punched hole and then as an option you may certainly choose to install a second pair of eyelet halves for extra adjustability make sure you space them so that both snaps engage properly and then we're ready to assemble the watch bands all right, we're to the easiest step of all. Remove the original bands from the watch if needed, sliding them away from you, and then insert each watch band adapter into the slot opening closest to you, sliding the adapter gently away from you until the adapter is centered in the band slot of the watch. And for the cuff, insert the adapters almost simultaneously sliding the adapters alternately just a tiny bit at a time until both adapters are perfectly centered and you're ready for your watch party. Congratulations! You've just created another beautiful watch band. I think the watch band adapters allow such a variety of creativity between the different styles and of course the fabrics and colors. These little pieces of hardware allow you to create great pieces to suit every mood every season and every occasion we'd love to see your watch party creations share a photo of your completed project using hashtag sally tomato and hashtag watch party bands keep in mind that these watch bands make terrific gifts it's easy to select fabric pattern or color and style to suit anyone's personality and taste. And since they don't take a lot of time to sew, that leaves you more time to share and celebrate with a loved one. From all of us at Sally Tomato, thank you for joining me on this watch party tutorial. I'll hope to see you again soon. Happy sewing!